Welcome to Platform Media International PMI Sports. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Ehizode. Like I just told each and every one of you, I'm having somebody across the Pacific and Atlantic. In Nigeria, the sports editor of Weekend Vanguard, Patrick Omorodion from Nigeria. Patrick, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm okay, Joe, and uh, everywhere, everything's okay, everywhere, the sun is shining, perfect. I can, you can say that again, that makes me very jealous. You said it's shining there, right? Yeah, you can yeah, come yeah. and see my weather here, it's, it's, it's funny here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick, I, uh, let's talk about sports, which, you, which is your constituency. Report just reached us that the Super Eagles coach, Genoa. Did I get that pronunciation correct? Genoa. Genoa, yeah. Okay. His contract has been renewed by the Nigerian Football Federation and he has been mandated on two issues take it or leave it. Contract that was signed by Genoa about a few weeks ago. The one, he has to qualify Nigeria for the 2022 World Cup and he has to lift the Nations Cup in Cameroon next year. Tough call, Patrick, I suppose, correct? Well, uh, Joe, uh, I don't see much difference between this contract and the former one he signed, because uh, in 2016, he was also asked to qualify for the 2018 World Cup, which he did. But then, they were not too sure, because he was just coming, they didn't give him the mandate of winning the nations, but they just said if you can get to the semi-final. And he got to the semi-final and crashed. So I think there don't no much difference between this contract and the one that was signed before. Oh, I thought there's a difference because that land they said he will have to leave in Nigeria, just like the way Clem, one of the most successful coach in Nigeria, Clemens Westerhall, lived in Nigeria, married or had a Nigerian girlfriend. So Genoa should stay in Nigeria. And perhaps marry in Nigeria too, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, Joe, that, Joe. You know when you say different, you know because uh, uh, that those those clauses were added because uh, I I must tell you the honest part because uh, the NFL were not fully really comfortable with Genoa, and uh, it's like they wanted him out. They, they wanted to give him some tough conditions that will make him, you know, I don't want this contract anymore. He walks walks away, but. The man, I think he doesn't have anywhere else to go. I think Nigeria so far is the biggest country he has handled ever. And ever. So that was why they gave him those conditions, thinking the man would go. But you understand that the man also has some Nigerian agents who are working with him. And if he walks away, what will be their own uh, fate? So they must have talked to, talk to him to hang on and sign this contract and take every shift he's given. So that is why you see that uh, after some daily dallying, the man now came out. Look, I'm ready to work with the NFL. I like what they are doing. I like the progress I've made. I want to continue. All those ones are just talks, you know. So I was not surprised the other day when I saw about two or three days ago, I saw General Raw calling a Nigerian lady. I said, ah, These people have started. They just want to <laughs> make us believe that, yes, the man is ready to live in Nigeria now. Because that was what West Star dog did. West Star, you remember, he was, he was dubbed a Dutchian. The Dutch and Nigerian because he actually stayed here and was eating Nigerian food. He was good in Amala. He was doing the best. You know, so but this natural, you know, he comes in, there's a, one or two matches and flies back to France. So they wanted to tie him down here by giving those conditions. And the Nigerian friends have really gone into work and they've started the action. I don't know whether this girlfriend was just I arranged for him recently or he had it before, but this is the first time we are seeing him with a Nigerian girl on Facebook. Patrick, uh, my, 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 my viewers are saying you have a pretty face. They want to see your face. It's like your hands are covering your face a little bit. Maybe you pull the camera back. Okay. Exactly. Now, <laughs> uh, when we, <laughs> on the very funny side, when West South was there in the 90s, West South is a 50, was a 50-something-year-old man. Then arise in his 70s. <laughs> Having a girlfriend in Nigeria at this age, is it a will or go where on the field of play? Well, he's the one that feels the pinch, that wears the shoes and knows where to pinch him. So <laughs> I don't have to tell him about that. No, but he has okay. to be very careful. Let's okay, let's <laughs> let's go 
let's go to the serious issues now. What, what difference in your estimation do you think Genaroa will make? They start the same players for the four years he was there, and the same players. I know that some Nigerian footballers are coming up. Chiku is where he did the People used to pronounce that name as Osime. We are essence. That yeah, name is Osime. Osime. My own Osime. So Osime, I think we should yeah. correct them that yeah. Yeah. it's not Osime, it's Osime. Uh, those are young players that are coming up. So why uh, is that the reason why the NFF thinks they are confident enough to ask this man to leave the Nations Cup in Cameroon in next year? Well, uh, Joe, I think uh, if we we'll, if we we'll see the way Osime is playing, the way Egalo was, or, you know, that also played, you know, the way indeed he's performing now in Leicester, and Chukwese is performing in, in the Spanish La Liga, you see that we really have some good players. If they are given the time, if they are, if they are blended well, because you remember in those days, uh, the, our teams used to start to travel out to, to places like Papenda in, in, uh, in Holland, in Holland, where we are from. I remember also the, the, the camp at some time in Moshag in Switzerland. They were always camping outside the country to prepare for a competition. But these days, they, they hardly had that time to come together. I think that's the problem we are really having now. So if these players are giving good time to train together, well enough time to train together, I think uh, Coach Kroll would not have much work to do because really I, I don't see the work he's doing really. You know, because I just see that the man has a lot of players in his hands and his hands. We just call them together one or two training sessions and they go to the first match. But I don't think he's a good match reader. He was not a good match reader, or he's not a good match reader like West Ham. And West Ham knew his areas of deficiencies, and that was why he invited his countryman, Buffy, as a physical trainer, because they discovered that most of our players were either not fit enough or they were lazy. So Buffy really handled them and took care of their physique and their, their fitness. So I don't know who is. Uh, uh, who is General Ross, uh, 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 fit coach, uh, fitness coach now, right now. So, to me, uh, I don't know if he's given enough time, if he's given enough time, and he should stop coaching players here and there. He should, right now, he should have his team so that at the pick of a finger, he knows who and who to play, who and who to invite. But now he's still looking for one dresser, he's still looking for one other guy. Every time he's going out to look for players, who bear Nigerian names. And most of these players, not all of them are really keen to play for Nigeria. So he should concentrate on the ones he have. And again, if you remember one of the conditions that I gave to him, I could see how he can infuse some Nigerian players, home based players into the team. You know, that was exactly what West also did then. You can't tell me that out of 23 players, when only 12 would dress, only 11 would dress, then the remaining ones, you cannot put in one or two home based players that will gain experience with the foreign base. For him to just have a total 100% uh, uh, foreign base is not really it's not the right thing to do. So he should give, he should be able to have that courage, confidence to, to, to put some home based players in the team, even though they are not commanding regular share, but they should be there to train. Those one, that one will give them the confidence that look, I can make this team. Then those ones who can't make it, they have the confidence that look, if I play well, I'll be able to enter that team. So that's what they really want for him. And so, so Patrick, he, let's let's be fair to this man. Do we have a functional league in Nigeria, football league in Nigeria? Because I, I, I was home for a few months ago <laughs> in the 90s when Superstars and Odoji United played at Onikon Stadium. I was the reporter just like you then. We used to be at the stadium a few hours before the match and it's packed to capacity. When shooting stars play Bender Insurance, is played to a uh, full to capacity. But right now, I, I, I have even on the pages of newspaper, I can't, I can't, there's no evidence of a functional league in Nigeria. So where do you expect this man to bring the players from? As a matter of fact, the Super Eagles is not a a babysitting ground for players. It is a, a team of the best players of Nigeria where they where they gather. To produce a result. The Super Eagles camp is not a training or a, or what I call a, a breeding ground to, to discover players. It is where the best gather. 
correct? Yes, Joe, I don't know what you mean by a functional league because uh, as far as I'm concerned, we have a league in Nigeria, even though uh, most times the, the stands are empty or near empty. But if you remember the years you are quoting, you know, right now, uh, I think what really happened those, those days was that uh, our, 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 our stadiums were filled to capacity because as at that time, actually, this television, uh, uh, was not on television then. So most people had no uh, opportunity to watch or see matches. So people wanted to feed their eyes and they go to the, to, to, to the league, league, league arenas and watch football. And you can't tell me that uh, uh, we don't have players in Nigeria. Yes, the league might not be as strong as what we have in Europe or what we have in maybe North Africa, but we have good players. Out of a league of uh, 20 teams, I still believe that if we go to the matches to watch these matches, there's no way we can pick five good players from 20 clubs in Nigeria. So that's what I mean by saying the, the man should be able to infuse some players into the team, one or two. That can I, thought, I thought that was the reasoning behind the CAF establishing what you call the Chan, uh, is it Chan Eagles, uh, where home-based players have to play within themselves in Africa. I thought that was the purpose to, to give the home base the chance to wear the national colors, right? Yes. But we, even at that, we, if we have a chant going on and they still don't see any player good in the chant team that can make the team A, because to me, the, the chant team is team B. If they can't see any player of the team B to make team A, then it's, it's like we are not doing anything in Nigeria, then the league is, is, should be scrapped. But to me, I believe that uh, the coaches are just lazy. They don't want to do their work. They just want to get ready-made materials from abroad. Uh, Which coaches? The, the, the professional league coaches or the national team coaches? The national team coaches. How many of them watch matches here? They just, most of them just come. Maybe if they are in Lagos, they just go to Nick, uh, sorry, Agege Stadium to watch one or two matches. I mean, no. We have league reporters in Nigeria that can give them quality players from the league. That can make that. Remember oh. that Keshi didn't ask anybody to help him. Keshi had his own team. Keshi went to the grassroots. Keshi got some players and they went to 2013 Nations Cup on Herade and they came back with a trophy. That's the kind of coach you want. If you take, <laughs> make, look, you should be able to take uh, decisions that take some risks and come and be able to defend your position. So that was oh. what Keshi did. Even uh, yeah. Like, don't go there, Patrick, because you are going to touch on my run now. Did you mention Keshi? Do you remember how Keshi was torn apart on the pages of newspaper by our colleagues? How Keshi was ignominiously sacked by Pinika Maju. He was here in Vancouver with us when he announced the sack of Keshi. So if Keshi did well by picking people for home base, why was Keshi fired? Well, uh, yeah, if you, the, the story of why Keshi was fired is a long story, and I don't think Phoenix was the, the real uh, uh, masquerade behind that. Phoenix was just towing the line of his predecessor because I still believe that uh, that was one of the conditions given to Phoenix to get their support. Megari was actually act, uh, was the brain behind that uh, decision because in, during Megari's time, even where Keshi was playing in South Africa, when the nations were on, they were threatening him. With the sack later. They were threatening to bring another coach while the commission was on. But Keshi didn't let that light night distract him. And along the line, they now discovered that, you see, like, like most, West, uh, Keshi learned a lot from West Hall. Keshi brought in some techno players, some seasoned play, players who, uh, who also coached the team. Somebody like Sivan Sokmala, he played the game and he was a very good then command. You know, when you see the man analyzing football for you, he will give you every detail you need. So they discovered that. Uh, the Sopala was the brain behind Keshi to so try to see how they can pull up that guy. And at the, at the end of the day, they sacked him. And you know why they sacked him? One of the reasons they gave to, for sacking him, they said they caught him urinating somewhere along the hotel in, the, in South Africa that he was embarrassing Nigeria. What has that got to do with coaching up a team? Say he was, was urinating on the flower of the hotel. That was one of the reasons. And you, again, you know that uh, the owner is not a man you can push around. Yes, he said, look, if you want to sack me, sack me. He gave them the conditions. Every condition they gave in his letter, he achieved it. 
say, okay, now I've done my job, saving my money. They don't want to, didn't want to pay. And what did he do? The man gathered support and was able to go to task. And today they paid him. Nobody wants to tell us how much they paid, but I know they paid him how much. So I where is, uh, where is Sivan Sokpala, by the way? He's, uh, he used he's to be a very good friend. He's in Lagos. He's in Lagos. So one, once in a while, he analyzes football. Man, this guy is he ha, he's, he's best in football. And uh, unfortunately, they don't want to. Pick. You know, I remember that it was the time he went to Aimba. But you see, anywhere you go and you people don't like the truth, you won't last there. Because don't suppose not like somebody that says the truth. He says this as it is. They never liked him in Aimba because the chairman of the clubs he put his sister there and the sister wanted to control the coach. Can you, why can the sister of a manager or the sister of the cap chairman? <laughs> yeah. Controlling the coach and tell the coach what to do. If I okay. take that and he was given it. Okay, Patrick, so let's go back. Like let's go back to the Chan Eagles. If you say there are players in the in the local league who are good, the last time I remember vividly that that was the only time Nigeria got to the finals. They were routed by I think Morocco 4-0. Correct? Yeah. So if they were if they are if we have quality players in the <laughs> In the local league, why have why are they not performing at that level? Joe, it's not enough to have the players; they must blend. You know, you see, the the kind of treatment given to the super good, given to team A, is not given to team B. You cannot say because the players are good, then you just gather them together in one week to go and play a competition. It's not done. There's no way they can perform magic. You know, see, we have players in Africa, in Nigeria, that can stand any team in Africa. But what those other countries do, we don't do it. They, are, they, they have good training facilities, they have uh, good welfare packages, and they have long time training. They blend together. If you don't blend together, there's no way you can play do magic on the team. Okay. Patrick, you are a very transport journalist, maybe 20, more than 20 years on the job. Why are we not crying out loud when our own? is being diminished. Local coaches are treated unfairly. Local players are treated unfairly by our own. You just mentioned Keshi, mentioned Siasia. If you give them the same money they are giving Generoa or Philip Trosse or the mechanic from uh, Holland, like Libretz, those, those are coaches that were picked up from the side roads. To come and coach Nigeria. If you give Nigerian coaches that kind of money, you think they will not perform. You mentioned Okpala, Pesci, you mentioned Siasia, you mentioned Amuneke. Why are these people not given the chance? And foreigners are given and loaded with dollars, and they, they cannot even out, outplay our local coaches or that. So, so why, we, why do we hate our own? <laughs> well, uh, Joe, you see, uh I want to go back to the West South era, you know. I think after West South, then there was this thing that they were introduced that time, you know, they call it sign on fee. It, sign on fee used to be for players, I remember. But suddenly sign on fee became a thing that Nigerian government was paying to coach foreign coaches. And they paid up to about three hundred thousand dollars then. You know. So I remember that it was one time I went to Holland, you know, then there was this uh, Training they had uh, holiday training between the six. So Patrick, and your hands, and your hand is covering your face right now. Okay, so I can see your pretty yeah, face. So okay, I, I now, I now, I now went to the to the ground and I now saw Amunike and uh, sorry Amokachi and uh, uh, Shurumu. Shurumu recognized us and they took us and we started interviewing him. And then as as we were talking, I now saw Jumo Sono, former coach of South Africa. Then this issue came up, and I went to him. I said, Juno. Please, uh, how do you people do you in your country? When you, when you employ coaches, do you pay sign on fee? The man was shocked. Say, what do you mean by sign on fee? I said, look, they pay you extra money for signing you, you know, that kind of thing. Say, I don't know how you people do in, that, in your country, but in our country, it's not like that. I think that was when it started. So when I came back, I, I talked to Gonfrey. Gonfrey said, even the 300,000 didn't get to him, he was given only half. So you see, it's a racket. It's a racket. So that is why. Uh, most times, you know that uh, they cannot do that with the, foreign, with the Nigerian coach. Because the Nigerian coach is it's an insider, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an indigenous it's a citizen. He knows his own rights. So he may not be able to part with money. You know, that used to be what it used to be then. 
when before this era. So that Patrick, is the, we are talking to my no international. The, it's no longer the book now. Patrick, we are talking to my international audience. When you say when you say racket, what does that mean? Behind the behind the scene deal, behind the scene deal, where you know you talk to somebody, you say, look, this is how much you are supposed to get, but I'll give you this percentage. And the man will accept, but he will sign for that uh, the amount they will tell the public. Then he gets only half of it. That's a racket. That's a racket. So, so those are so the money, that are slowing our, our football down. So money is changing hands, and uh, and uh, with all these bogus amount we see on the pages of newspapers, the coaches are not receiving that, right? Correct. Before now, it was like that. Especially with that sign-on fee, because that's what I'm talking about. But I sign-on fee, they used to pay those days. Yeah, you also bring that to mind because two coaches that were about to be hired in Nigeria have revealed that in their books. Uh, Laj, Coach Lajabak, who yes, took Nigeria yeah. to the 2010 um, World Cup in South Africa, said World Cup in South Africa. Yes, yes. and then this uh, this coach from um, from England uh, who used to coach sports um, forever. I've forgotten his name now. Also mentioned that that. People ask him to part with some amount of money for him to be hired. So, are, are we able to dig out these corporates? I know that there are some very, very fishy people in NFL. Some people whose background is whose background is prolonged, or whose uh, whose uh, tenure in NFL or in sports is prolonged because they. They, you, they are into this racket that you are talking about. We know them, but are we compromised journalists that we cannot name these people or we cannot fish out these people? How, why not? Are they, are they too powerful to be fished out? No, Joe, it used to be like that those days, not now, you know, when... Oh, the the last part. Coaches, okay, since, great. You know, for, since the since the NFL, you said I said I said it used to be like that when they had a powerful uh, director those days in the ministry. He was in charge of everything. He put people there. He, he knows who and who to be elected into the NFL. He knows who to be the chairman or president there. But right now, the situation is no longer like that. After the NFL, kind of. Because they are getting their freedom a little bit now, you know. That's why they have changed the name from Nigerian Football Association to Nigerian Football Federation. So it's no longer as it used as it used to be. They are trying to they are getting it right right now. But again, this issue of coaches, to me, I believe that uh, if you want a good coach, you go for the best coach, and not go to the roadside like one boxer in Nigeria will always go to Togo or Cameroon to go and get a, 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 an opponent who is not even a boxer to tell us that he wants to fight. <laughs> <he wants> to <laughs> <get him. laughs> <laughs> we know that. We can't mention his name here. All right. But are you confident of the Super Eagles in Cameroon 2021? Yes, Joe. I, because I was in Egypt. I was in Egypt with them uh, when they lost to Algeria in that uh, uh, semi-final. So that's why I'm telling you that uh, if uh, Raw was a good match leader, we would have beaten Algeria because uh, our boys were confident of that game. You know, but even though initially they were scared of Marez and but when the game, when they equalized that uh, first goal, I mean, if you see the boys were on fire. But along the line, if our coach was a coach that could read matches, there's a way you can put somebody on those players and make sure that our the balls don't get beyond the, the center half. You know, you don't play a game. I think they say the best form of uh, defense is attack. If you put, I put pressure on the Algerian side, they wouldn't have been coming to our area for that uh, uh, infringement to be committed for the trick. So that is the only problem I see in, uh, in Raw. It, I don't think it's a good match with that. Otherwise, that match will have gone into extra time. And because of the strength of our boys, the Algerians will have to do that and will have won. What about the department of goalkeeping? Are we safe there? Uh, you see, again, I don't know what they saw in uh, Akbei, because it's still that Akbei is very, it's very jittery. You know, Akbei is jittery. Then uh, Ozoho also has his own mistakes. But the home base play, uh, goalkeeper there, uh, from uh, who was who used to be in the gym, what was his name again? Uh, 
Yeah. Yes, go. Yeah. Yes, he 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 is also good. But again, the 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 what they hold against him is that he's not too he's not too tall. That uh, he's, he always has problems with area ball. But I think uh, if you have a good uh, what do you call if you have a good goalkeeper trainer, you should be able to out of the three, you should be able to get one good goalkeeper that can do that. But again, like we say here, you don't you don't have to be a foreign base to be a good goalkeeper because we have very good goalkeepers in the, in the local league that are better than uh, AK Chukwu is one. But the Chukwu is always regular. It's like he, he has cornered that shirt, that position from the local league. What about uh, what about Maduka Okoye from Germany? He's a young coach, a young player, goalkeeper. Is he is he good? Well, I don't I don't really know how good he is because I'm not some time with the German league. You know, I'm exposed to the EPL most times, so I don't really know how good he is. But uh, if this will monitor players abroad, because I know that General uh, Raw has some scouts who go around this country. They should be able to support him and tell him what they have. And the goalkeeper trainer should be able to assess him and know whether he's good for the team. But again, you know, if we have a very good defense, our goalkeeper doesn't have to be at that the top shape. But I think the defense is as good as the Has he alone retired or joined a lot of Manchester United or of, uh, of, of China or <laughs> playing for China? Is, has he retired? And if he has retired, is Osime a very good replacement? Oh, why not? Even though, even though Igalo, Igalo is also praising the boy because he believes that the boy is doing great, you know, and his confidence is improving every day. He's getting getting that confidence every day, and that's why everybody wants him. Every club is looking for him right now. And uh, you see, in 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 uh, in Egypt, he was not brought in regularly. He was not brought in well because of Igalo. But now that he has been given regular share, you see that nobody will take that share from him anymore. He's, he's a very good player, you know, but I don't understand why Man U are still doing that and why they are still keeping him, you know, because in this England, these English people, they don't want somebody that will displace Rashford. Rashford is a homeboy and he's an asset to their national team. So they can't bench Rashford because of Galo now. So I think that's the problem they're having. But they should be able to come out and sign him if they really want it because Galo wants to stay Man U. Not interested but, in the but has he has he alone retired from national team yet? He has retired. He has, okay. he has said everybody that he wants to go because of the way he was treated. Really. Okay, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Patrick Omoro, your sports editor of Weekend Vanguard, reporting for PMI, reporting from across the Pacific and Atlantic, Nigeria. How are you? How is the weather in Nigeria? You said it's sunny there, right? I'm hot now. I'm sweating as I'm talking to you now. Talk Patrick, I, I can't thank you enough for being a guest here today. Uh, let's do it again next time. I, and uh, my viewers are giving me a very rave uh, comment about you. And uh, we'll do it again when time permits. Okay, thank you very much and I appreciate it. Goodbye from, from Canada. And I wish you the best of uh, luck. It's always my pleasure talking to you on PMI. Thank you. Well, reviewers, that's Patrick Omoro, John sports editor, Weekend Vanguard in Nigeria, talking about Genoa, the coach of the Super Eagles, and the hope of Nigeria in the African Cup of Nations in Cameroon 2021. And with that, I have to sign out today. But before we go, I ask you to catch us on catch us up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Eizode, the usual uh, presenter here. And I'm not going anywhere. Stick around and I will see you again. Have a good night, guys. Bye bye. Have a good night. Good night. Oh, good afternoon, yeah. <laughs>